All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead the prayer. Jeffina, Octavia, anyone can be. Sure, Buster. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, beautiful time uh, you've given us to gather together once again in your presence, Papa. We thank you uh, for your goodness, your mercies, your kindness, uh, your faithfulness, Papa, in our lives. Throughout the week, you have uh, preserved us, you have sustained us, you have provided for us, Papa. We thank you, Father. Um, uh, thank you, Father, for all that we learned. Thank you, that uh, uh, Lord, all the principles that you want us to learn, Papa. We pray, Father, you speak uh, through Pastor Paul, Lord, empower him uh, to speak uh, uh, the truth, uh, to speak encouragement and inspiration into each one of our lives Abba, and bless him as well uh, father as his family Abba, we pray uh, for wisdom grace and strength upon him i pray for each and every student uh, here Abba. i pray father for your uh, grace upon us lord give us a receptive heart a sensitive heart Abba, uh, uh, to to submit a uh, lot to the working of the holy spirit uh, lord let your word uh, produce fruit in our lives father you know, all these things we pray in the name of the lord and savior jesus christ amen amen, amen. i thank you so much Sylvia. uh all right so we'll we completed chapter eight last week uh, and we've covered quite a lot of content right uh so we'll get into chapter nine now what i noticed was we still have quite a lot to cover so i may not explain every point Right. Uh, so the only reason I may be going a little faster is so that we can complete the portions on time uh, for your final semester. Right. So we'll go to chapter nine, but feel free to stop me anytime. Ask me questions. Uh, you can ask questions. You can uh, also raise your hands, ask questions. Right. So don't stop yourself from asking questions. Uh, uh, but if I'm going a little fast, it's just so that we can uh, cover the portions quickly. Right. Chapter nine workplace relationships now uh, you know if we are in the workplace we are spending about 40 50 hours every week in the workplace more than what we normally spend at home and uh, and again in the workplace it's people we are dealing with people there are relationships uh, people have different levels of intellectual uh, different levels intellectually emotionally physically everyone are different and uh, we talked about how uh, you know, business or ministry, it's all about people. So we can never say that, okay, uh, of course, now there's a time when we come and there's this work from home stuff. But uh, again, it is still, you would be still having a team communicating with people. Now, uh, when it comes to workplace relationships, especially, you know, we must understand that uh, relationship itself is is God-given. Right. When you look at family, husband and wife, children, uh, uh, friends, these are given by God. Right. And God wants our relationships, earthly relationships uh, to be fruitful, to be good, to be meaningful. Right. So let's look at a few uh, scriptural parts or scriptural truths to help us uh, to navigate this whole aspect of workplace relationships, because, you know, the fact is there will be conflicts, there will be misunderstandings, and uh, there will be people who we may feel are, you know, uh, partial or uh, they don't, you know, they don't work effectively, whatever the reason may be. But what does the Bible say about relationships, workplace relationships, right? Let's look at these points, right? First one. Maintain love, which is the basics of human relationship. Now, First Corinthians 13, we all know it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Uh, so at the workplace, sometimes we, we tend to forget the human side of things. right? We get so focused on tasks. Okay, these are things that need to be done. Uh, but we forget that, hey, they are people. And maybe they are going through different problems. And we need to walk in love. Uh, our, our personal needs, our real life challenges, uh, everything is there, 
right? It, it doesn't mean that if we go to uh, the workplace, those challenges, you know, just fade away. No, it's there, right? Uh, every now and then, the reality of our challenges may come, you know, even when we are working at home. So people sit all around you at the workplace and each one of us or each one of them have a story. Each one of them have a personality. So don't forget to walk in love. Uh, we talked about this, right? We talked about how the Lord Jesus did his ministry. It was not... It was not to become famous. It was not that he wanted to, uh, you know, uh, stir up a whole rebellion, or he wanted to just, you know, do these wonderful miracles and get known, and people should just follow him. No, he says the reason he did his ministry because he loved, because of love. And so, uh, very important: be kind, be loving, show the God kind of love, right now. Don't be conceited or proud because of our knowledge, uh, even if we are doing well, of our, even of our position, positions, and the Lord may, you know, take us to higher positions. That's wonderful, uh, right? But never be conceited or proud about it. Just be able to relate to people uh, in, in love. Don't keep a record of people's mistakes. Forgive and forget. Don't be easily offended. Uh, but don't applaud or don't uh, support wrongdoing in any way, right? Uh, be supportive to your colleagues. Uh, basically, the, the point is walking in love, right? Now, this calls for an additional grace upon our lives right? because it's not going to be easy. It's not like, you know, I, I can just say, okay, I'm going to walk in love. No. Uh, you know, there may be people who have offended you, people who have said things behind your back and you've got to know about it. How do I love them? We cannot love them in the natural, right? The natural, is, it's, not, it's not possible. But with the God kind of love, the agape love, that's what God's calling us to walk in, right? So even as we do our tasks, uh, we're working hard, we're doing the things that we have to do, don't forget to walk in love. Two, when you have the opportunity to bless somebody, do it. Right? Uh, I like this verse, Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not so say to your neighbor, go and come back tomorrow and I will give you. Give it when you have it with you. Right. So in the workplace, there will be opportunities uh, in the workplace where you can be a blessing to somebody right now it may be a simple thing right uh, it may be just picking up somebody from work right it may be uh you know just helping out somebody to you know uh, uh, to get their lunch for a day right you know, if, if that's an opportunity you can do you can do it right uh, you know, even as I teach this, I get these thoughts of, you know, the time when I was in the corporate sector and uh, I spent a lot of years there uh, and very young. So, uh, so I, you know, it's not like I remember these as I'm preparing, but it just suddenly I remember it. So I just think I, I share it, right? I, I remember there used to be this um, security guy, right? So he his job was to be at the lift, uh, at the escalators and um sorry elevators and he would stand there and that's all he had to do he had to be there uh, you know. and you know nobody really bothered about him uh, because that's all he had to do and you know every now and then he had to clear the dustbins tell people you know the workers okay uh just be around that area right and it's a small area and he would sit there and have his lunch and you know i used to always speak to him um and uh, you know we uh, we had a good relationship, right? So every time when we reach office, I would spend at least three, four minutes just talking to him and uh, not just a high and walk off, but I would talk to him. And, uh, you know, I got to know about his family, about the things that are happening in his family and uh, the challenges that he's going through. Uh, uh, and I remember, every, you know, just, just trying to be a blessing whenever I could, uh, if not always, but whenever I could. 
uh, there were times when he would, uh, you know, I noticed that he would carry his lunch bag, but sometimes he wouldn't carry a bag. So I would ask him, hey, uh, you didn't bring your lunch bag. Oh, yeah, I got delayed at home. So maybe I'll go somewhere and eat. Uh, so I remember telling him, hey, I have coupons. Uh, you know, during those days, there was these Sodexo coupons or something. Uh, so we would give it to uh, give it to him and uh, he would go have his lunch. And uh, it, it's a small thing. For us, it's a small thing. But for them, it's a big thing, right? So uh, look for ways to be a blessing to people. Right? Uh, it, it's not that you have to look out only for people who are you know, working in a security or working with uh, you know, cleaners or helpers. You, you can also be a, a blessing to your colleagues, right? So bless them when it's in your hands, right? And remember that when we bless, it'll always come back manifold double you know uh, god will begin to bless us uh, be sensitive to people's feelings your emotional intelligence matters matthew 7 12 here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior ask yourself what you want to do what you want people to do for you then grab the initiative and do it for them right eq emotional intelligence uh, it is to what does it mean it it includes how to recognize and manage your own emotions and respond correctly to the emotions of others okay, uh, uh, okay i'm going to repeat that eq emotional intelligence is knowing how to recognize and manage your emotions your own emotions also how to respond correctly to other people's emotions now picture this you've got a you know uh, on a monday morning and you know this week you're excited you know, you happily go to office you're, you know you're just joyful you're happy things are going well and suddenly your boss comes and says hey i told you to send me that email it's been two weeks when you send me here and he starts getting upset and shouts at you now you've come into the office in a good mood. It's a Monday morning, and you got a and your boss is shouting. Now, the how do we respond to that emotionally? That is called EQ. And how do also how do we control our emotions? Uh, right. Now, these are things that we learn. Right. It's very easy to say, you know, hey, it, it was my leave. Why why do you want me to send it to my? Leave? Or we may get upset and uh, you know the entire week gets. Uh, uh, you know, uh, becomes negative and uh, you just start cripping the entire week, work performance goes low. Uh, but EQ is the ability to manage your emotions and the emotions of others. How do you, how do you take it? How do you react to it? Right? Be sensitive to people. So one of the things that we can do with the same in the same scenario is think maybe he had a rough week. Maybe he, you know, didn't get enough sleep and he's upset. Or maybe he got, uh, you know, a, a strong email from his boss. So that's why he's reacting to it. Normally, he wouldn't do that. Normally, he would smile and say good morning and uh, begin the week. But today, he's like that. So maybe there's something that happened in his personal life or even in the workplace. Maybe something happened. Uh, maybe he didn't get a car parking spot. He had to go all around the whole office to find a spot it could be anything right so it's how we react to it and over time you know uh, even as we work even as we uh, grow in the lord this is something that we must have a control over right? our eq to be sensitive to people's feelings uh, and you put yourself in their shoes right uh, so that's eq next one Cheer somebody up. Worry weighs us down. A cheerful word picks us up. Cheer people up with an encouraging word. When someone does good, tell them they did good. Uh, go that extra mile. Be there for them. Appreciate them. Uh, when somebody has contributed to an idea or a suggestion and people have used it, uh, uh, appreciate them in public so that people will know. Right. And and what will happen is it 
it cheers them up it encourages them right uh, words that we use make a lot of difference um, so there are people in your team and you know uh, they feel they, you feel that they have you know given a lot uh, they have you know given certain good ideas or uh, plans or propositions on how to do a certain task and after uh, after applying it you see that it's been it's been effective it's been fruitful honor a topic cheer them up hey you know this person did this and uh, now, you know the the sad reality is sometimes even in ministry people don't do that right they don't cheer others up no we must do it right ministry workplace everywhere cheer one another now now you may say hey but i'm just a colleague just in the entry level working with somebody that's okay cheer the other person up right i remember this um, you know, I, I joined, I had joined the uh, a corporate sector, a very big company, uh, and they said um, it's a it's a process related job. So it was more of you know data and numbers and all of these things. And I said, oh man, I can't sit in front of the laptop and do all these things. You tell me to talk, I'll talk. You want me to train people, I'll train people. Um, but this job was that way. And, and then I remember we began the work and I would tell my colleague, this is not me, this is not what I want to do. Uh, but this guy, he was new, right? So he always kept telling me, hey, why don't you look at it in a, in a way that it's a training for you so that even if you get into a trainer's position, you'll know how to use these tools and you'll know how to you know, work on these tools and you can be effective. And I thought to myself, yeah, well, maybe it's a training for me. So I worked there uh, in this whole you know, process, all numbers, Excel sheets, Word docs, all these kind of things, these new things that were there during those times. And uh, I can say that that one year really helped me because uh, you know, when, I, when I, was, I, I, I got another position uh, as an analyst, quality analyst, and when I got into that, uh, I had to use all of this. Okay, so they said, hey, we'll train you in all these things. And I remember telling them, hey, I, I, I already know how to use them. And they were very happy. Okay, so since you already know it, you become a quality analyst trainer. You train the new people who come in. So in a year, what happened was I joined as an entry level, but I became a trainer in a year. Now, how did it happen? Because of a cheerful word of one colleague, which I don't even know. He joined with me. We were probably one month in the process. But you see what a cheerful word can do. And I'm so grateful to him because I told him if he wasn't there, I may have quit my job and would have gone somewhere else. Uh, but a cheerful word can really build each other, build a, a person up. Right? So look for ways to cheer people up. Don't forget your please, thank you, and sorry, uh, which is Colossians 4 6. Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in a conversation, not to put them down and not to cut them out. Right? So as much as possible, uh, use your please, your sorries, your thank yous. Uh, and remember, we talked about it last class as well. Um, the last sub, uh, the chapter eight, we talked about uh, how kind words turns away rot. Right? Uh, it just calms down a situation, right? So all it takes is a few additional words. All it takes is, you know, while you're writing an email, it's the additional thank you, it's an additional please. If, if there's something that should have been done, not done, apologizing for it and saying that, hey, I'll get it done. Uh, these will add grace uh, to your character, to your conversations, to your relationships with people in the organization, right? Any questions? Should we go ahead? Okay. Be an encourager, even of those who don't like you. Uh, this is hard. First Thessalonians 5.15. See that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. And some versions say make it your ambition to do good to one another, right? Now, 
to support, inspire, instill confidence in a colleague at a workplace is really the most encouraging thing that you can do. Step out, encourage people. If there are gifts and grace in your, uh, in your calling, encourage them, right? Uh, uh, you know, you, when we do that, by just by saying great work, hey, keep it up, you've done well, these simple statements can really inspire somebody. Right? Uh, I remember, uh, I always think of this many years back, you know, we joined, I had joined the worship team, you know, I, when I was in Bible college and then joined the worship team. And I always thought to myself, I, I'm not a good guitarist or I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough. But I may know certain chords and, you know, so, so I always thought not good enough. So I remember auditioning, I auditioned in 20, I think it was 2011 that I auditioned. Uh, 2012, I began to, uh, uh, late 2011, 2012, I began to uh, be rostered in the worship team, right? And, and during those days, leading for one now was a big deal, right? Um, yeah. I, see, now it's easy, right? Now things have changed in terms of worship. There's more of prophetic worship and you can just have three songs and, you know, do it in an hour. Uh, but during those days, it, maybe it was there, but I was not too good at it, right? And uh, there were times we would have these five days of fasting and prayer and, and they'd say, okay, Paul, you lead. But one hour, how to lead one hour? Right? Uh, I used to choose six, seven songs, eight songs. Uh, and, and I remember many times, you know, I, uh, like I didn't go off note and all of that. It's not like it sounded bad. But the many times it, I felt like, you know, it, I, I was not happy. After finishing the worship session, I, I'm not happy. God, you know, whatever I planned, you know, I started this song, say this, I mean, exhort the congregation, say this, whatever I planned, nothing worked out. Uh, many times I wanted to, you know, just say, speak to our worship pastor and say, hey, I don't want to be lost today. I want to take a break. But every time I thought of it, every time there was an encouragement from him saying, hey, you did well. You know, and then I remember there was these couple of times when, uh, you know, I got these messages from, uh, you know, wonderful men and women of God, uh, those who are part of church, those who are from different ministries. Uh, and they said, hey, uh, thank you for leading us in worship. Just a simple thank you. It really encouraged me. Right. And even from the church members, you know, they say, hey, uh, oh, thank you for leading. Do you know, this song ministered to me. Uh, I was really encouraged. Um, it really pushes you. It really steps you up and you say, God, I thank you. And it gives us something to be inspired about and to press on. Right? So imagine to us if it does that. I'm sure it'll do the same to others. Right? Um, uh, you know, it, it could even be to children. It could be to, uh, uh, to your spouse, to your family, right? Uh, to your... Uh, relatives to the workplace, right? to anybody, anybody, you just tell them, you know, I remember uh, uh, there were times when um, I would cook initially after marriage and I don't know what I was cooking, but something would turn up. Uh, and then, you know, my family members would say, hey, this is really good. You know, you've done it so well. I was very serious. It's I thought it should be something, but it's ended up in some other way. Uh, say, no, 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 it's good. You you try to do it this way. Man, I'd always say, if it, you know, it was just an encouragement. Now, it's not false hope, uh, but it was some kind of an encouragement, and it keeps us looking forward, right? So we must do that. We must do that. Uh, but also remember, that there is a place for correction. And right? it's not like somebody does wrong and you keep encouraging them. No, uh, there's a place for correction. And uh, we also looked at that, right? So as much as possible, try to be an encourager, even to people that you don't like, even to people you may feel that, you know, they are they don't like you, or even you feel that you don't like them. 
go overboard and be an encourager. Remember, even enemies can be turned around. Powerful. Proverbs 16, 17. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. What a wonderful verse. When, the, when a man's ways pleases the Lord. So, for example, you can put your name there. When my ways please the Lord, he even makes my enemies to be at peace with me. So my enemies are looking for a way to bring this guy, to bring me down. There's no way, so even my enemies are going to be at peace with me. Now, will there be friction in the workplace? Definitely, yes. Will there be people who are hostile? Yes. People who see a threat to your professional growth, they see that, hey, until this fellow is there, I'm not going to you know, get a promotion. So I want to make sure that this guy goes away. That's what happened in Daniel. He was so jealous of Daniel. He said, I've got to get rid of him. Why does the king always talk to Daniel? Why is it that he's always saying Daniel is good, Daniel is good, and what are we doing here? And so they said, okay, make a decree, throw him in the lines then. When, when our ways please the Lord, even our enemies will be at peace with us. Do what pleases the Lord, and he will move in on your behalf in terms of the people that you are working with, in terms of your workplace relationships, in terms of any other relationship. Do what pleases God. Other things will come into place. Those enemies who try to throw arrows at you, those arrows either will not come near you, or even if it comes, it's going to just return back. It's not going to affect you. Why? Because you're doing what pleases the Lord. Be careful of who influences you. Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous should choose his friends wisely, for the way of the wicked leads them, leads them astray. Now, if you read the book of Proverbs, there are plenty of verses. I think the most number of explanation on knowledge, wisdom, and friends. And it's interesting, right? Friends, and he also used the word neighbor. And it's interesting that Solomon, full of wisdom, is talking about knowledge, wisdom, and friends, people who are around us. Proverbs 13, 20, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. This is so true. As iron sharpens iron. Be careful who influences you. Right? In the workplace, there will be people who will, different again, different kinds of people. I have the choice to choose who we want to be with. Right, uh, it is our choice if we want to spend time with people who are gossiping, always backbiting, always grumbling. Remember, iron sharpens iron. Next thing you know, we will be grumbling, we will be backbiting, gossiping, and then you say, Hey, I was never like this. Why did I? Why, why am I grumbling always? I was never grumbling before. Maybe it's the friends because iron sharpens iron, right. But if you have good friends and you say, hey, over this, you know, over this last year, since I've made friends with these people, I've seen that my work productivity has got better. I've been able to make decisions wisely. I've been able to spend time with family. Uh, and it's nice. I feel good about it. Why? Because maybe it's your friends who have been speaking to you. Iron sharpens iron. And, um, and especially when you, when nowadays I, I talk to college folks and our teens in church, uh, friends are everything. Friends are more than anything else in, in their life. That's all they want. Uh, uh, it's okay. Parents are there. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. Most nine out of ten. Okay? It's friends. I'm going out with my friends. My, can my friends come home? My friend is, has this shoes. My friend has this bag. My friend has this phone. Uh, so even I want. And it's been there for many years. 
but friends, people that we are with. Uh, remember, iron sharpens iron. Uh, when we, when we, we must allow certain things to influence us. We must allow certain things not to influence us. Why do people get into bad habits? Um, you know, drinking or uh, smoking or drugs. Why do they do it? It's not like they like to do it. Most of the times, it's because of their friends. The friends would have pressurized them. Hey, my, all my friends are doing it, so I want to do it. Right? Uh, take time to be with people who can challenge you. Right? In the sense, uh, make you a better person. Make you better in professionally uh, and make you better as a person. Right? Uh, uh, I remember, uh, uh, you know, in the workplace, uh, uh, I, I've shared this before. There were two of us who were top of, like, you know, there were two or three of us top performers in the, in the workplace. And, uh, and we were very good friends. Right? But wherever we go, Wherever we would go, so we were like one, two, and three, right on the floor, the, meaning the best performers, three of us. But we three were always together, and there were other guys also. And so people would ask us, "What do you all talk about? You know, all three? Are you all talking about how, who's going to win or who's going to do better?" Uh, I'm talking about uh, 400, 500 people in in, in the team, like uh, on the floor in that process. Uh, uh, of, of 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 calling and talking to people, so that team of 350 odd people we were we were the top three, but we three were always together, right? Uh, and they would ask us, "Hey, what do you all talk about? What do you all do? Don't you have other friends?" So we'd say, "Yeah, we have other friends." But what happens is we all three push each other. So I used to tell these guys, "Hey." April is coming, I'm going to be first this month. They'll say, no ways, I'm going to do it. I I've got an idea. They say, tell me the idea. You know, so they will share. You know, so this is another way where you can, you know, uh, uh, we never hid anything from, from us. We never did that, even though, uh, and our competition was very healthy. So there were months that uh, one month, this other person would win one month. I would win one month. The other person would win. So it was always that. It was always three of us. But it was a healthy relationship, and it was it was so good that you know when we all three moved out from that company, uh, we still are in touch with each other. We still you know uh, remember those times, and uh, we just knew that you know it rubbed off on each other. That that uh, appreciation, that hard work, that skill. Uh, that determination to do well it just rubbed off on each other right and and it's true it does now imagine i've chosen people to who were it's not like i was not friends with others right we were friends with other people right uh, people who would you know just uh, put the call on hold and spend 20 minutes waste time there were people who did all of that and they were my friends as well but i chose not to let that influence me could i have done it I could have done it, but it is wrong. But if I do it, uh, how can I become, you know, the performer of the month? I can't. So the mindset was to do, you know, to be the best for the month. So when iron sharpens iron, you choose what you want to do. Right? Even uh, you know, there's so many examples. Okay, I won't give you any. Let's go to the next one. Know your boundaries in corporate socializing. Right. Uh, Proverbs 5, 18 to 22. Uh, so be happy with your wife and find your joy with the woman you are married or with a man. Uh, likewise, right? let the, her charm keep you happy. Let her surround you with her love. Son, why should you give to another, give your love to another woman? Why should you prefer the charms of another man's wife? The Lord sees everything you do. Wherever you go, he is watching. The sins of the wicked are a trap. They get caught in the, in the net of their own sin. Now, we are called to build relationships with each other in the workplace. But know your boundaries in corporate socializing. Right? When, now, this is, again, a call of integrity and character. 
this nobody can give it to you nobody can say here take integrity take your character no it is something that we build on our own right uh, now it's very good when we have uh, family picnics other celebrations uh, but remember know your boundaries stand your priorities and hold on to godly standards you don't have to do anything to to please people stay on your guard guard your life stay away from drinking and alcohol abuse and womanizing and men also uh, you know uh, just spending a lot of time with uh, colleagues men colleagues um, flirting uh, all these are a true mark of uh, of a true character and strength now in the workplace right whether you're married whether you're not married all of this will be there right you and i have the choice to know to make boundaries and to stand by those boundaries right in the corporate sector it's okay for you know after the work men women go out they have a drink they have a coffee and again they're spending 40 50 hours in a week always seeing each other and it's a very vulnerable place it could be uh, 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 you know relationships could be built and they can become they could go overboard now god is not saying man and uh, you know uh, male and a female in the workplace should not have relationships they should they need to talk to each other there's work that needs to be to get done we can build friendships all that is good but know your boundaries now for example there's a team outing right and the team outing or the team camp is for two days and you know that there are other women and you know that you know it's a vulnerable place it's not the office anymore right so you're going for this uh, camp or whatever uh, from the workplace your entire team is going now before you go sit down write down what are things that you will do what are things that you will not do boundaries when I was in the corporate sector, I remember uh, I after I became a believer, we used to go to these, you know, two days retreats and two, no, not retreat, but these camps. Um, they would have these resorts. So we'd book the resort and you know, maybe 30, 40 of us would go. And they would carry all kinds of, you know, buy alcohol and all these things. Nobody knew about my past, but I remember I would go for these camps and uh, so I decided to myself, some things I will not do. One, I will not stand, uh, I will not be alone with a girl in any place in that resort. I will not be alone. I was not married, okay? I will not be alone with a girl. Two. I will not drink alcohol and I will not partake in all that. Right? I'll be away. Three, when there's too much of gossip happening, I'm just going to move up. Now, I told these to my friends and the, and the team and they said, then what is the use of coming? I said, it's okay if I don't have to come. Uh, but these are the three things. Don't call me for all your gossip sessions after your you know you're the drinking one don't be don't you know uh, ask me to do certain things very clearly now did was it something were, were people happy no they walked some of them made fun some of them said hey don't be a saint all of that i said i am a saint Ephesians one uh but know your boundaries right now there are boundaries that you will have to set and you set them right uh, in the workplace right uh, now i'm not saying only corporate ministry also in the ministry also know your boundaries if you are a leader know how to behave with the other sex 
know how to uh, talk, right? You know how to, you know, you know, we know that we are in this generation where everything is, you know, free and open. But the enemy does not change. Right? He still has the same tactics. So know your boundaries in every way. Right? Set them right. Honor your boss. Proverbs 7, 27 and verse 18. If you care for your orchard, you'll enjoy its fruit. If you honor your boss, you will be honored. To honor and to respect your boss is the greatest thing that we can do. And it's what God wants us to do, right? Uh, we must honor our boss. Even the boss who is harsh, because remember that God has placed them uh, above you, right? Uh, so in everything, whether they are, you know, they may not recognize you, they may not appreciate you, Whatever it is, you say, hey, I will honor him because God has placed me above him. Now, if there are things that he asks us to do which is not in line with God's word, that is uh, that is something that is not, uh, you know, uh, that is asking you to, you know, bend the rules of the word of God or bend uh, or, or to just do something that is not in line with God's word, you can deny it. But otherwise, honor your boss, right? Even the one who is harsh, we are called to honor. Develop workplace etiquette and cultural sensitivity. Right? Uh, Proverbs 23, 1 to 3. When you sit down to eat with someone important, keep in mind who he is. If you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. Don't be greedy for the line for the fine food he serves. He may be trying to trick you. Proverbs, I think, does not uh, miss out on anything. It is. When you sit down to eat with someone important, keep in mind who he is. If you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. Remember where you are. Workplace etiquette, being culturally sensitive. Now, workplace etiquette is so important because, you know, as a person who is in uh, learning and development, uh, I spent years in the workplace there. And my job was to train people to learn skills, develop them. Uh, both in, in in character, develop them in their speech, and uh, you know just the, the the way that they are uh, to encourage, so uh, to to build etiquette, to help them to have a, a, a good corporate life. The workplace etiquette is very very important. Just please, thank yous. Uh, you know when you sit for, when you sit for food, uh, you know how you uh, sit and eat. Or when you uh, when you you know when you're asking for a request, how do you do it? Uh, just simple things, just just workplace etiquettes, right? Uh, it could even be you know uh, wearing good clothes. That's a workplace etiquette, right? Honorable clothes. Uh, uh, so be sensitive, culturally sensitive. Build uh, uh, etiquette in everything that you do. Okay, next one. I'm not sure if you can finish this. Anyways, okay, when the heat is on, behave wisely. Okay, let's look at this, right? Uh, the first Samuel 18, 13 to 15, and verse 30. Therefore, Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Therefore, when Saul saw that he had behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. Then the princes of the Philistines went out to war. And so it was whenever they went out that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. King Saul became jealous of David's accomplishment. And how did David accomplish all this? Through wisdom. He put, now King Saul himself put David in the military. He, he, David was a shepherd born, but he put him in the military, hoping that David would be destroyed. Okay, come, be in the military. If, because if, see what happened was after David and Goliath, everyone started singing. Saul killed thousands, David killed tens of thousands. Jealousy came immediately that time. He said, how do I get rid of this guy? Uh, so you see the enemy, how he thinks. 
So Saul said, Saul thought to himself, okay, one way is put him in the military, send him to war. Somehow if he dies, it's good. Then I can continue to be the king. But what happened? David act more or behaved more wisely in every situation. Right? Uh, the word behaved more wisely simply means he acted prudently. He acted circumspect you know paul, paul writes that right oh, uh circumspectly to be prosperous to be successful so he was very wise david david didn't go to uh you know to saul and say hey saul even i've got an army now if we both go head on i think we can i will i can defeat you so it's better you just forfeit your throne and give it to me and I'll be the next king of Israel, right? But he didn't do that. He learned, he was wise, he learned, he understood. Even when he got the chance to kill King Saul, he cut off the edge of his robe. Uh, and he says, and he says to King Saul, see, even though it was in my hand to kill you, I did not see the end of your robe is with me. And when Saul saw that, he said, oh, David, you know, uh, you truly you are God's anointed and all of that. But he acted wisely. Now, David was in a pressure. You know, there was pressure on him. All across, every time, wherever he runs, Saul and his army is coming. So it was not like David was just relaxing. No, he was going through a difficult time. The heat was on. His life was on the line. He was not yet the king. But even in that situation, he acted wisely, right? Overcoming the current situation or not looking at the situation and making your decisions. What if David killed Saul? His problems are over. Really, his problems would just be over. He would have killed Saul and the army would have said, hey, okay, now he's no more the king. Since you are the king, we will join you. End of story. But he behaved wisely. Even to the point that when Saul, when they came back with the news that uh, Saul had, you know, killed himself because he didn't want to be killed by the uh, enemy sword, what did David do? Did he start worship that time? No. He put on sackcloth and ashes and he for the death of Saul. Why would he mourn for the death of Saul? So, okay, finally, at least I didn't kill Saul, somebody killed Saul. Or he killed himself, so now I can become the king peacefully. No, he he mourned the death of an anointed leader whom God had chosen. That is acting wisely, right? Of course, after that, what had to happen happened. He became the king of Israel, uh, but he behaved wisely. Probably the army would have seen that. He, Saul is mourning. Sorry, David is mourning the death of Saul. What a man, even though he was, uh, King Saul was trying to kill him, he's still mourning his, maybe, you know, maybe some of them would have thought, what a man of integrity, I want to join his army. And uh, so, you know, so we see that when we walk wisely, when we walk circumspectly, we will prosper. And, and, and this is most importantly at times when the heat is on, when there is trouble, when there is challenges ahead behave wisely in your in your in these moments of you know uh, heat i would say like moments of pressure uh, that is bogging us down during those moments try not to make decisions wait for a while let your you know just rest a while be calm and then make a decision prayerfully act circumspectly and when we do that god will prosper us right so we couldn't finish this chapter but we can finish it next week uh, any questions before we close uh, i've been talking a lot any questions and i hope uh, you know we've been able to understand and grasp uh, what we're learning together all right let's let's quickly close in prayer uh, let's pray Father, we thank you for what we have studied today. We thank you, Lord, for 
your word, God. We thank you for relationships, and I pray, God, that uh, you will enable each one of us, Lord, whether in ministry, whether in the workplace, uh, that, Lord, we will Lord, just have honorable uh, relationships, we will walk in integrity, and, and, Lord, to please you, Lord, in everything that we do. We thank you, Lord. I pray for each and every student that you will bless them and help them to understand and grow in your word, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you on uh, uh, Wednesday. God bless. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor.